So the first step is going to be to get your bathymetry contours uh, ready to import and georeference in ArcGIS. That way you can build some accurate contour lines. Uh, so to do that, we can drag and drop our bathymetry PDF uh, into Photoshop. We're going to select pages here and then you're going to see a different screen uh, or different settings. So you're probably going to see a resolution of 70 or 300 uh, pixels per inch. I'm going to put in 1200. That way we import a very high resolution image. I'm also importing it as a grayscale image. Uh, I recommend if you have a color image that you do the same. I'm just going to press OK here. Okay, so yeah, when we import this, we get this. We're just going to clean this up a little bit since we don't need all the space. So I'm going to press the C key on my keyboard and use the crop tool. So C for crop. I'm just going to drag the, the edges here to get something that I like. And then I'm just using the select tool over here to delete anything that I do not need uh, for georeferencing. There was a map scale in there, but I already imported this uh, into ArcGIS, and that scale is uh, very, very inaccurate when I georeference this. Anyways, uh, our next step, once we do our principal cleaning of our image, uh, we are going to create a new layer. You use uh, Control Shift N, press Enter, uh, and we can double click on the layer name over here and type in Hard Mix. Um, our next step is going to be to find the Paint Bucket tool. So sometimes it's down in these little dots, and then you'll have to select for a Paint Dropper or Paint Bucket tool, or it's called. Sometimes it's up here by the Gradient tool. So it might stack with the gradient tool. So like, like those little three dots, you just have to press on it. And it'll most likely open up the paint bucket tool. We're going to paint that layer white. Um, and you might feel like you did something wrong because everything disappeared, but no, this is correct. Uh, if you're having problems, like dropping your paint, for example, uh, like this, like it's only coloring certain regions, you want to make sure that the all layers option is checked off. Okay, so I'm back where we're supposed to be, where we have a white um, backdrop completely covering our contour lines. Uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to the layers uh, tab over here. I'm going to click on this arrow while I'm selecting the hard mix layer that we just created. I'm going to go to um, hard mix. Let's see. It looks like our hard mix layer is is too intense, and um, I'll show you how to fix that. So sometimes when we have a bathymetry map that has very light values, so they have very light grays and a ton of whites, and their contour lines are gray, um, that's going to be a problem for the hard mix um, utility. So what we can do to fix that is to um, press Control L on your keyboard to bring up the levels tab here. We're going to slide one of these ideally to this way. And my goal is to darken the edges, like the contour lines, but keep these fill areas uh, kind of lighter. So it just takes a, a lot of playing around. And this looks good enough to me. So now when we turn on our hard mix layer, <coughs> we should see uh, a better result. <coughs> Excuse me. So this still looks a little bit funky, right? Um, that's just because Photoshop has trouble rendering uh, these these types of layers. Um, so when we merge them, uh, the artifacts that we saw earlier will fix. Anyways, I don't want to merge them yet because, as you can see, these lines are broken up, and it's it's not ideal. So to fix this, what I do is I once again. Um, we'll use the levels tool, but I'll be using it on our hard mix layer. So I select that right here, I press control L, and what I'm going to do, this one's an easy fix. You just slide this, <coughs> this one that was over here, by the white, you just slide it down, 
and voila, you're good. And what you see uh, it did there was um, that it changed the white hard mix layer to more of a gray. So the more close to black that your hard mix layer is, the less intense it is. Uh, we don't really want to change the opacity. We'd rather change the value of the hard mix layer. Uh, otherwise, you get these, um, what I would say are undesirable uh, contour lines. Anyways, we're almost finished. Um, our next step is going to be to merge everything. I'm just going to do a little bit of cleaning up here on these uh, sections. So I'm just using the select tool or the rectangular marquee tool. And uh, saying goodbye to those grays. That's good enough. What I do next is I go to select color range. And then I press on the white. And then I press, oops. Sometimes it doesn't work. I don't know why. Okay, maybe that should be good now. So sometimes, that, yeah, that color range tool takes a bit. Uh, but now that you know it's working, once again, I go to color range. I don't mess with anything here like you might have saw me do. But I just um, left click on any white space. And then I press OK. So my goal here is to select all of the white, none of the black, and remove it. So that way you get a transparent image. So now that I selected all the white in this image, I press delete and I press control D to deselect those <laughs> fuzzy lines that are um, all over the place. And I'm just doing a quality check here. I'm using uh, control plus and moving these, these sliders over here to zoom uh, in and control minus takes you out. But this looks good to me. Uh, looks like this is ready for import. I'm just going to reduce the file size over here by cropping these edges. And then I press OK. Once again, to get to that crop tool, you just press C, you move your borders, and you press Enter uh, when you're done. We're actually good to um, save this now. So we're going to go to Save As, Save on your computer. Um, and this is already in my directory, but I, I do like to create like a directory on my desktop where I have um, all the files that I'll be importing into ArcGIS just to make it really fast. I don't want to save this in a funny location. I'm going to be saving this as a PNG. PNG files are very high quality files and they retain transparency uh, information. Um, and I know that this uh, contour map is from they don't say it specifically, but they just say the early 1980s. So I'm just going to name it that just to help me um, find some Landsat images later to overlay this on. I hit save, and you can choose any of these options. The default one is large file size, fastest saving, but I have a bunch of time, so I just do uh, slowest saving, smallest uh, file size. It doesn't take too long, and boom, you're done there with the Photoshop portion. All right, so we got our bathymetry contours done in Photoshop. My next step that I like to take is to go on Earth Explorer uh, from USGS. That is earthexplorer.usgs.gov. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the location of my lake. Uh, I'm doing Summit Lake here, and I know that's approximately, yep, right there. And what I do once I zero in on this is I should just be able to press on the map, like click on the map, and I'll be creating coordinates uh, where I'll be searching uh, Landsat imagery from, so that way um, this process will go a lot faster. Uh, next, I can change the date range. Um, so I know that this bathymetry map is from the 1980s. Um, doesn't say specifically when, just says early 1980s. So I'm just going to type in 01 slash 01 1980 and then we can make this 01 01 1984 uh, there's even options for cloud cover but I, I don't really mess with that cool now we can select the data sets that we're interested in looking for 
So we're just looking for Landsat right now. Um, there's different Landsat collections. So I'll use collection two, level one through four, five, and one through five uh, imagery. Um, I, I actually will be good to use four to five imagery here since this is a uh, 1980s. But if, for example, you're using imagery from long ago, you might want to just select the line set one through five. Um, and then for line set seven, if you're doing something pretty recent, right? Cool. But yeah, there's, there's tons of options here. <laughs> and then I'm ready now, so I just press results. And it's going to show me everything that I got here. And you can press this button over here, which is uh, show browser overlay. You just press that and it takes a little bit to load. But it shows what Landsat um, will look like if you were to import that into uh, ArcGIS. Anyways, when you're ready to download uh, your layer, you can press this download option right here. And I use, they're, they're different from option to option. So take a moment here. So I'll be looking for natural color. I'll be looking for a GeoTIFF, not a JPEG, GeoTIFF. And that should be good. So you press download there, and it's gonna download a most likely a zip file or just a TIFF file that you can import into ArcGIS. All right, I'm in ArcGIS Pro now. I have my Landsat information that I'll be using to georeference the bathymetry uh, contours that we extracted out of um, using Photoshop earlier. Uh, so at the screen, we just press New uh, from the Blink Templates tab, Map, and then you're going to want to find a good directory for that. Uh, I have a bathymetry folder on my de desktop, so we'll just do that for each individual lake name. Okay, once we see that we have a map visible, uh, we can begin to import that Landsat uh, images we downloaded that match to uh, an approximate year of the bathymetry. So what I just do is I drag and drop those files, those TIFF files, and I just put them over uh, these two right here, these two base maps. And they're geo-referenced, so it doesn't really matter if you start um, zoomed out anywhere. They'll be put into the same place um, when you load them in. I'm just going to find Summit again. Okay, there it is. So I am using a Landsat 5 uh, product. So I downloaded uh, three different bands. I downloaded band one, band two, band three. Maybe I should have downloaded band four. Uh, so that way I get a full color composite, but I'm not too worried about it. Anyways, we're gonna want to merge these uh, separate bands. Uh, so that way we can get a bit of color. However, if you're importing something from Landsat one, two, three, I think four as well, uh, they just come in as a stacked um, band image. I, I don't think that's correct terminology, but um, you won't have to worry about what I'm going to do next. And I'm actually going to import something now so you see what I'm talking about. So yeah, this, for example, is like a uh, Landsat 1 image of the same area just a year prior. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you don't have to do any merging here. But I'm just going to delete that layer now. Okay, so to merge these, I go to Analysis at the top here. I use Raster Functions, or I click on Raster uh, Functions. And then on a side panel here, I'm just going to type in, not merge, but I'm going to type in Band. And I want to use Composite Bands. And then I just select each raster. There's three of them, three bands. This option doesn't matter too much right now. And then boom, create layers, and we're good from there. I can actually delete these if I want, and I can even play with this and select the different bands, and it might do <laughs> might give different effects. So just it's just a matter of finding like what you like and what works for you. We're ready to geo reference our 
contour lines that we extracted out of Photoshop. So I'm just going to drag and drop above everything, and then it's asking us to build pyramids. This just makes uh, the imagery load faster, so I'm going to press yes. And as you can see, nothing loaded here, kind of sad, right? But that's just the reality of um, using PNGs and JPEGs, is that they need to be geo-referenced. Uh, Photoshop does not have that capability. So anyways, what I'm doing right now is just finding the layer and making sure that ArcGIS is actually able to read it. So what I do is I just right click over here on that PNG we extracted. Make sure it's in, uh, transparent, it's super important. And I just press uh, zoom to layer. And now my goal is to get that over that Landsat imagery of Summit Lake that I had. So I go to imagery, the top here, and then I press geo reference. And then I'm gonna press move. And what I do is <laughs> just scale out super far, right? And since I have like this kind of like weird tool um, loaded on my mouse, and I, I still wanna like pan the screen, because it's not gonna let me pan the this, this screen with this tool loaded, I press C on my keyboard, and then I use left click to pan. Anyways, th that should save me time just getting around ArcGIS. So as you can see, I'm like using a combination of dragging that that origin right there, and then using C, left click, to move around. Uh, otherwise, your alternative is, is to use your mouse wheel. So this is approximately over here. So I'm going to move this origin to where some of the lake is. Boom. It's, it does not be exact right now. And, and obviously, we can't see it right now, no matter how far we zoom in, uh, which is just an issue that I've had with ArcGIS. I don't know what's it's a bug. But anyways, to fix that, so you can see it, you're going to press save at the top of your georeference tab. You're going to press close georeference. And then you're going to um, click on and off the toggle visibility box right here. And then, yeah, now you can see that we properly loaded this in. Now we can actually start to fit this to our lake georeference and making sure that you have your bathymetry contour PNG selected and not any of these other rasters. I'm going to press move again, kind of get it in the right place, right? And scale. This is way too big. And there's some unique features of this lake that will really help me line up my bathymetry here. I'm going to have to rotate it too. I don't really know an undo function with the georeference thing too, so you don't press Control Z or it might mess up what you're doing. So you just have to use a combination of scaling it, moving it, and rotating it. So this right here should be our zero. That's where the shoreline meets the water. Zero water depth. Looks so far good to me. What I'm worried about though is is um, in the farther bits of our image whether the zero lines match up with where the water is or where the land is. As you can see here, there's a big gap. Not really a big bat gap, but a small gap between here and here. And this, this contour line that should be on the land or close to land is, is kind of in the water. So I think that's more of an issue with scale. So I'm going to scale this up. Just have to move it again after I scale it. This is looking pretty good to me. I would call it good. Everything's lining up for the most part. Another way you can make some micro adjustments is to use um, the add control points tool. I'm going to mess this map up a bit so we I can show you the power of this tool. Okay, I'm going to go to add control points, and what I do is I find something that matches with where this bathymetry map should go. So I'm going to use this corner right here, and this corner here. So I, I do from the source, which is our bathymetry contours, to the target of where it should be, and it's going to move everything over. And uh, you want to re repeat this in kind of like a uh, clockwise fashion, counterclockwise fashion. just. Um, over and over because it's going to distort your other lines too. As you can see this one's way off but the other ones were 
pretty decent. Let's see, yeah, just keep on doing this over and over. Um, I don't prefer this method, but it's nice if your mythometry contours are being a pain. I'm not going to save that because I don't like those lines. I prefer what I did earlier. Great. So we're finally done with um, overlaying the georeferencing. I honestly think that's the hardest part. All right, I'm finally ready to begin contour line creation. And these contour lines that I create will um, help us interpolate a bathymetry map that we can use to calculate littoral extent and whatever else we're interested in. So I'm going to go to View, Catalog Pane. Should open on the right of your screen, but who knows. And then I go on uh, Expand Databases. And then you're going to have a project, uh, I mean a file geo, database, file geo database file. You're going to right click it, you're going to go New, Feature Class, and then we're going to name it, uh, let's name it Summit 1980 Contour Lines. I'm just copying that into the alias. And then I'm going to be creating a line. I'm going to press Next. And then I'm going to add a new field, which I'm going to use the word uh, depth contour. And then for the data type, I'm going to use long integer. And that's good enough. We press finish. And we don't have to, we, we just have to reach page two for that one. Um, great. Now we can create our line. So I just exit out of that catalog view. You don't need that anymore. And then I'm going to go to Edit tab over here, Create, and then I'm going to double click on the name of the feature class that we just created. And it's going to give me these cool looking options. I just want the line tool. That's all we need right now. And then we just stick to our contours. If your bathymetry map might be cut out at some points, for instance, if there was a scale in the way that kind of uh, overlapped the contours, you can just um, interpolate, guess, <laughs> guess where the lines would be, right? So I'm just laying these down. You don't have to be doing these at a certain space, but I kind of like to be accurate or as accurate as possible. And yeah, you just keep on doing this for forever and ever. All right, let's say I really mess up while creating these contour lines. What I can do is I can just hover, uh, hover over um, my mouse over here, over like one of the vertexes, and I can just move it just like that, nice and easy. I have to pause for a second though, I can't just immediately move it or else I'm like creating lines in the same place. So I'm about wrapping up here. So to close this contour, this first zero meter shoreline contour, I just go to close to that first vertice, it doesn't have to be exact. I just double click it uh, before that move option comes up. And it looks good to me, it looks great. Oh yeah. We press the check mark button and we are good. All right, let's say I might have messed up or had to take a break when I was creating these contour lines and I have two lines for the same contour depth. What I can do is I can actually merge them by going to the edit, uh, should be merge. And what I wanna do is I wanna use the select tool that automatically is assigned. I select both of the things and press merge down here. And now they're on the same contour line. Uh, previously, before I did this merge, if I were to select that, it would only select this, but after doing that merge, and if I select one part of the area, it only selects that. So this is helpful if you're making mistakes or if you want to merge like maybe all the five meter contours in the map, just keep them in the same bin. That's an easy way to do that. Uh, we can also edit vertices of these uh, later on. So we just select using the select tool over here and we press edit vertices and then we select our line that we're interested in, in editing we can select a ton of vertices at once 
do something like that. I'm using Control Z there to just quickly undo that. But I can just refine and just do that with edit vertices. Okay, let's say we successfully created a contour line and we want to assign it a depth. What we do is we go to our contour line um, feature file that we created earlier, right click it, press attribute, attribute table, and I see the screen pop up. I'm just dragging it down so it isn't in the way. And I'm going to go to use the select tool over here, select that contour line I created, and it's going to glow down here. So if I had more than one down here, you'd see one glowing that is selected and the other not glowing. Anyways, for the one that's glowing, we can put in our contour depth. So this is just going to be zero since it's the lake shore. And then I hit save edits when I'm done with that. Oh yeah, I want to save those edits. And we're good from there. So we just do that for each contour uh, down until we get to the last one. I finished my contour lines. I have depths for each line down here uh, in that attribute table. My next goal, oops, I want to make sure I save edits right before I go forward. I'm going to go to um, view, uh, catalog pane. Next goal is to actually create a polygon of the lake um, shore rather than just contour lines. We're going to be using this later. This is going to be really essential. So we're going to go to uh, our database here, new feature class, and we can create this, uh, create a name for this. So I'm just going to do Polygon Summit 1980. Polygon, yep, we just click finish from here. We don't have to assign it a depth attribute since this just covers, uh, captures the surface uh, area of the water. And we can exit out of that catalog. Okay, so once again, we're going to go to the edit tab, create, and we're going to double click on the polygon feature class we just created. We're going to get a ton of options here, and actually, this matters which option we use. I'm going to use the trace option here. So you can double click that in this panel, or you can use it down here. And what this what this tool does, it's, it's pretty nifty, right? You just press um, the outer contour vertice, vertice or vertex, and you just, uh, you don't have to really even try to trace it. You just wrap it around. Now, sometimes it'll get stuck, and what happens is either the trace is just having a hard time, or, um, there's a, there's a hole where you're in your contour line. So when that happens, when you get stuck, you just click once to create a vertex uh, where it's kind of like doing weird stuff. And then you go a little bit farther down where your contour line is. So you, you want to still stick on where your contour line is to be as ex accurate as possible. And you can see I'm doing that right here. I'm getting maximum accuracy. And then it allows us to resume and connect uh, our trace right there. And then, yeah, we get to the end. I just click once to create that end vertex, and then you just press this check mark button, finish, and then boom, uh, you got your shape file polygon that captures the surface area of the lake. Okay, let's say if I had islands that I needed to uh, cut out of here, uh, we would need to create a new. Uh, shape file. I don't have islands in this bathymetry, by the way, but I would create a new um, polygon shape file and I would trace um, the contour of that island. So, for example, let's say this area right here is my island. I would just trace the contour of that island with the new polygon feature class, just like we did over here. And then I would go to the edit tab. What I'd want to do is use the clip tool and then I'm not going to explain this fully, but you can just hover over the different parts to see what you need to do. And these settings right here are good. Okay, so now we're actually ready to uh, create our bathymetry DEM, or digital elevation model, uh, which is going to be the fun part. Um, anyways, before we do that, actually, we have to turn our contour lines into vertexes. Um, otherwise, we won't be able to use the interpolation tools or functions. So to begin doing that, we go up here uh, in the analysis tab, 
we click tools and we're gonna type in generate points along and then we can look for the generate points along lines uh, tool we just click on it input features are going to be our contour line uh, file that we created and we can choose point placement by distance yep there's a percentage thing too here I've only used distance so far um, but for the distance it's most likely going to be in meters you can control all whether, what do you, whatever you want here um, I have a rough idea of how large Summit Lake is so I'm just going to type in 50 here separate the vertexes 50 points and I do not check this here I do not do that so this looks okay to me uh, what I'm checking for is that these vertexes represent the curves and the nature of these very unique shapes um, that Summit Lake has and I'm actually going to go smaller here uh, just so I can fully capture them when I do the interpolation okay so I feel like this is right on the edge of being almost too much but I'm happy with it looks good to me so when you're happy with your vertexes that you created or your points whatever they're called uh, we can actually create our bathymetry DEM and interpolate it by using the natural neighbor tool. So I go over here, uh, tools, analysis, type in natural, and then I use natural neighbor from the spatial analysis toolkit. There's also 3D analyst tools. Um, I believe they have the same output, but I've only used spatial analyst tools just to keep things constant. Um, input features are gonna be the points that you created, right? So you just press that. Your Z value field, you want to use that for your depth or your elevation or whatever you're using to uh, quantify your contour lines. And we can name our output raster. And we can call it, I'm going to be calling it 1980 or Summit 1980s um, symmetry. DEM. That's a lot, but remember that this this was a this bit, original bathymetry map was created from 1980 to 1984. We don't really know the specific date. And then output cell size, I leave default uh, for right now. It usually auto calculates the suggested uh, cell size, but um, I like to press run and see if it does a good job. If it doesn't, what I do is I just change it so. What I mean by good job is that this is kind of um, not too high resolution. So I'm gonna try and go like half of it. Or put in half the cell size. Let's see what happens to the resolution. So resolution looks great now with the cell size that I assigned to it. We don't want to make our output cell size too small, like we uh, don't want to make it drastically smaller than what it used to be otherwise we're going to increase our processing times by a ton because these represent values like each tile represents a value and if you're dealing with more values you're calculating more and whatnot so cool we generated our map our DEM but we're not done yet as you can see there's a bunch of excess here that kind of messes up the image and if we were to export a CSV from this used to calculate littoral extent it would greatly bias uh, that first zero uh, that's represented by our lake shoreline, right? So we're going to clip that out. To do that, we go to edit, I mean uh, analysis, raster functions here at the top right, and we're going to type in um, clip. And yeah, you press the clip icon. Our raster that we're clipping is the bathymetry dem we created from using the natural neighbor tool. Uh, I just leave this on outside. Clipping geometry raster. We're going to use the polygon uh, that we created earlier that represents the surface area. And to just to uh, double check, for example, you have multiple polygon layers that you're using the right one. You go over here, press the drawing order, just make sure that everything lines up. I think it looks good. Uh, and then make sure we check use input features for clipping geometry. That will actually clip it to the shape of this polygon. Otherwise, if you don't check that, it's going to clip it to the bounding box of. Um, the shape file so 
we actually won't see a change for what we already have. Cool. I'm going to unenable that and I'm going to create a new layer. Great. And yeah, as you can see, we have this nice, beautiful bathymetry map here. If we click off our old bathymetry DEM that we just clipped, um, that green or <laughs> outer stuff disappears, right? I'm actually going to take off our um, points along lines and just doing a quick check here with our contour lines. It looks good to me. It looks like what it should be. Um, and I can even change the color of this. It won't affect any of your data. It just affects the representation. And I, I just like to do this just to see if it matches up with what the bathymetry would look like. We're actually ready to uh, do the int tool on this raster that we just clipped, which allows us to export our raster data into a CSV that we can use to calculate littoral extent or surface area or whatever we desire. Um, so to do that, we just press the analysis tools, we type in int, and we use the int um, image analysis tool. Oops, uh, something, something happened there. Or spatial analysis tool, don't use image analysis tool. You just double click on that. Our input raster uh, is going to be the one that we clipped, right? So we just clip something, and if yeah, you want to double check which one it is, just go over here to the left, and then the output raster, I'm going to name it like int bathium summit 1980s, run it, and you're going to get a funky looking bathymetry, right? <coughs> Once again, to fix that, you just go over here by value, and if you're bothered by it, or if you want to just double check what's going on, you can just change it there into a color scheme that you like. And yeah, it looks good to me. It doesn't look so funky. Now, if you notice, if we compare this uh, to the other DEM that we had, or the other raster, this one's kind of smooth, right? So what the int tool does to that clipped raster is that it, it rounds um, each value into a um, whole number. So for example, if we go down here to our original natural neighbor, DEM, our first DEM out of three, we notice that there's different decimal values. And we kind of notice that here, right? Because these different shades can represent decimal values. That's the only way that you're gonna get that many shades. However, here the int tool will um, push those, uh, those numbers towards a, a whole number. Um, so now we're ready to export this. So we right click it, we hit attribute table. I'm just gonna exit out of our contour line um, table because we don't really need that anymore. And I'm just double checking here that we use depths. And yeah, these match up with our depths, right? So my max depth is 14. And then the count here just represents how many cells that are in that. Uh, so that way we can get relative percent, um, like surface area or something. A dry versus a wet year. Anyways, um, one point I do want to make really quick here about the int tool pushing these values into whole numbers is if, for example, you have a lake that might be two point or two meters deep, right? Very shallow lake, um, and your contour lines are like 1.8, 1.2, or 0 0.8. Um, with that field that we created earlier, that depth field um, in our contour lines. I'm just going to go back to it and actually real quick. In that depth field, we use the long integer, which doesn't permit the use of um, decimals. So what I would do instead is just um, add a zero to, to kind of create like a pseudo decimal, I guess. So if our depth was like 3, um, or like 3.2, uh, I would just write 32. And then if our depth was 60, I'll just write 60, and then yeah, the decimal, pseudo decimal is like between that 3 and the 2 and the 6 and the 0. And as long as you keep that constant between all values, um, you can use the int tool and you won't sacrifice um, <laughs> your, your depths being pushed to like only three numbers if your lake is only three meters deep, right? That way you can get a more refined um, <coughs> CSV to use for your calculations. Back to 
or attribute table for integrated raster. So out of this, pull this up. We are ready to export it. It honestly looks great to me. So we, this is three lines over here. We click that and we left click it. And we want to click export. Uh, we find a good location for us to export it. Um, oftentimes, it's put in a weird place. It's difficult to search for or access. And I'm just creating a new folder here. You can name it whatever you want. I'm just calling it export. And making sure to save pending edits. Shouldn't affect this right here, but it's always good to keep things saved, right? Um, output name. We want to just give it whatever output name we want. Um, so I'll just call this historic. Just summit. Historic um, bath dem, and um, the important part is to name it .csv at the uh, end here, or else it's going to export some interesting ArcGIS format that we won't be able to pull into Excel or pull into our Studio and do our calculations from. So yeah, very important. Include the .csv, or you're going to suffer. Uh, we press OK. And yeah, if we were to go to that location, we'd actually see our CSV. And you can even see it down here if you scroll down to standalone tables. And yeah, that's it. You have your historic lithometry DEM. You have your CSV that you created. Now, if you wanted to, for example, share um, the bathymetry map that you created or share the contour lines, share the polygon, um, if someone else was collabing with you, I don't know, or just to keep it, um, for safekeeping, what you can do is right click on whatever feature that you want to export. So for example, let's say we want to export these contour lines and share them, we go to data, uh, uh, right click it, data, export features, and then just like kind of like with the CSV thing, you just select a good location, I'm not going to worry about that right now, and then you, you can put in any input name, so you put contour lines, and yeah, save it to a good location, I'm not doing that for this example. And then you don't have to give it a specific ending for these shape files. So yeah, you just press OK. And it's going to generate like maybe like, I don't know, four to eight files. But yeah, you just upload them all because some include like um, location information, which is important for a shape file and if someone else is importing, uh, importing it. Now, if you were to export a raster, you want to go to data, export raster. This is going to be a bit different because it's going to bring up this panel. Um, but yeah, you're pretty much ready to press export uh, once you choose a good location and a good name, that whatever you want to call it. Uh, output format, use TIFF. And if it asks you for compression type, use RLE. That's what I like to use and that's what I found is consistent. Um, and then yeah, you just press export. You don't have to worry about the settings tab. And that's how you do that. Sweet, so I'll be going uh, all right, let's work on clipping this bathymetry map uh, to a dryer. Uh, my first step is going to be to um, drag and drop <coughs> a TIFF file that encompasses the dry conditions that we're looking for, um, whether it be from like the Google Earth Engine script or whatever source you obtain it. I'm using the Summit um, dry file that Josh uploaded uh, that he created using his Google Earth Engine script. So I'm just going to drag and drop that here. Um, I'm going to put it below everything else. And we actually don't need that right now. Um, so I'm just checking everything I don't really need. And as you can see, yeah, we dropped a completely new Landsat image there. Um, and I do want to get a better idea of what this image looks like. Um, just to make sure nothing funky is going on. So yeah, it looks like the lake's in the same place. As you can see here, it looks like it's massively um, um, more dry or just massively less surface area. So yeah, this is good. We know this is good to use. Um, so I'm going to keep this layer on. And I'm actually going to see if I can maybe alter the bands just to uh, 
make this uh, make this a little more visual for me. Uh, okay, I like that. So yeah, you just want to choose something that works for you. The default works for you. The default works for you. But you can also change things over here, which might be preferred. So you don't have these funky colors. You can adjust. Ooh, yeah, like you can adjust the gamma, like like so. Oh no, get back. You can adjust the contrast. So yeah, you can imagine you can get something like that, right? But I'm just going to choose something here that works for me that <laughs> gives me a, a good idea of what's happening here at these like short. I'm just trying to get an idea of where I'm going to be putting my contour lines so that way I kind of match the same scheme because it, obviously this is not a fine resolution image for how small uh, Summit Lake is. Your bigger lakes, you most likely won't come into this uh, problem. Anyways, we are ready to get going. So I'm just taking off our contour lines. We don't need that anymore. What we want to do is create a new feature class, right? Uh, for this to represent our dry surface area. So we go to edit. We don't go to edit yet, my bad. We go to view and we go to uh, catalog pane. Okay, I'm going to create a new feature class. And just like with the polygon shape file earlier, I'm going to give it dry summit uh, polygon. Copy that into the alias. And yeah, we just need a polygon. We, so we can press finish. We don't have to go th through all the six pages. So, oops, we go to edit, create. We select our dry summit polygon and we press this button over here or this line. And I'm just going to create an outline <laughs> doing this for the whole lake, right? And then when you're done, you press this, this OK button. So I'll meet you there in a second. One thing I'm going to quickly address right here is um, a potential question of, OK, I'm trying to create my, my vertices, but my polygon is in the way. Or it looks like it's in the way. So what I can do to fix that is I go to the appearance tab up here, and I can adjust the transparency. And you can do this with any of your rasters or your lines, whatever you want in RGS, which is really cool. All right, so we have our dry surface area polygon created. I'm going to clip our previous um, bathymetry dim that we created um, to this layer now. And to do that, I'm going to go to analysis. I'm going to go to raster functions over here at the top right. I'm going to type in clip in the search bar and click click the clip icon for our raster. We're going to choose the one that we created initially. Um, <coughs> that was the kind of like that near or that natural neighbor. So just to double check that, I just go here. And yeah, no, oops. To clear that accidental selection I just did, let's try, let's try this next. That didn't work. I go to edit, and then I press clear. So that, that was an accident. But anyways, I'm just checking to make sure that this lines up. There's no funny stuff going on um, when we overlay those layers. But yeah, we're going to be clipping it to that first natural neighbor raster we created. And I'm pretty sure for you all, when you do this, it's going to be coming in these same colors too. So that's one way to identify it. But yeah. Summit natural neighbor is our raster that we're putting it into. Clipping type outside, that's the default. Clipping geometry, you want to use the, the dry polygon that you just created, right? And then you check the use input features for clipping geometry. Super important. And yeah, you're gonna hit that new layer button. And we're gonna turn this layer off. We're gonna turn our polygon layer off. And, oops, zooming in too far now. Um, now you can see we have our clipped um, dry bathymetry. Looks, uh, looks a little interesting, right? But I think it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so 
that's ready to be integrated. So you can use the tools function here. Use int, type an int there, and use the image analysis, not the image analysis, spatial analysis tools. I mean that same mistake earlier. It shouldn't matter, but make sure you use the spatial. Input raster, that's gonna be the one that we just created. Um, be careful, there might be like tons of duplicate names, so just make sure that you're putting in the right one. Um, and yeah, you run that int tool that we found here in the tools, and yeah, it's gonna spit out something pretty weird, right? Pretty weird looking. So just to visually check what's going on, I change the color, see? And yeah, this, this looks pretty decent to me. Um, obviously, if we conducted the bathymetry here during the same exact dry period, it would be much more exact, but um, obviously when we put on our dry, it kind of makes sense what's happening here. So cool. Um, we have our integrated raster uh, for the dry year. What we do now is we just export it the same way to a CSV. So we right click it, click attribute table. Here are these top three <coughs> horizontal parallel lines here. Export. You find a good place to export it to. Not this default location. I don't like exporting it to a geo database at all. Um, makes things complicated, right? So anyways, your output name, you want to make sure you include the .csv, but we're just going to put dry summit <coughs> .csv. And then yeah, we press OK to export. And then we can do our analysis with those different CSVs. And we'll have a, another walkthrough, whether it be a written or a video series to um, explain how we can create um, figures.